Hey there, I'm Gasper, creator of Star Kinesis and JS Veterans. This is going to be my last revamp overview video. It's going to focus on the play scene and things affecting it. You'll notice that it's a lot more chaotic now, as well as a lot more extravagant. The explosions are more prominent, flares are more numerous, particle effects are more intricate, and details overall higher. And that includes the model meshes. So when it comes to the chaoticness of combat, there's two things I'll say about that. The first being, in real life, combat is chaotic. And the second, Star Kinesis is the most complex of the first four games. And that is reflected in the combat system as well. But even this is something that's very easily adjustable. All the extra parts of the explosion they are removable if you just lower the quality setting a couple notches. Quality setting is what allows this game to run on mobile platforms. If you crank the game up to 5 on mobile, you're asking it to play what's designed to be on a PC. Not only are particle effects drastically reduced, but things like gun hatches, model complexity, player counts, enemy counts, spawnable ship wings, ambient particle effects, and many other things are also adjusted. And for that reason, when you're playing on PC, mobile players can't actually join you. So oftentimes you'll notice around the battlefield there are these cylindrical particle effects with some sort of model in them. They're essentially drifting space infrastructure that is impassable for your carrier. If you click on a location and that's in between you and the target, your unit will automatically stop. There are also various ways of capturing the objectives, and the different objective types have different interactions when you get close. Some will have large amounts of defense turrets, very few reinforcements. A defensive objective will have many reinforcement waves with quite a few reinforcement wings, as well as some objectives like the scouting objectives just require you to show up for a few seconds with any unit, and then you can leave. Some will have an immediate burst of reinforcements and you just need to clear them before you can capture it. There are quite a few other variations as well. As far as how you cap them, some require you to deploy hacking drones, which are automatic once you're within a certain range. Some require you to send out boarding parties. Most of this stuff is fairly automated. Some require you to just be in range. Some require you to blow up the defensive rooms. Others will require you to destroy any potential satellites that are in the way of capping, and some will self-destruct instead of being captured. That might lead you to ask, why would they self-destruct? And that brings me to the story arc of the game. So first, the story within the game will leave you a little bit lost, and feel like it's jumping around a lot. That is, somewhat by design. You'll get the gist of it, but it's going to feel weird. The reason is, the next three games are going to be telling you the same story from different perspectives kind of gapping that bit of knowledge. The story will focus heavily on accessing power, how it's obtained, how you manipulate people to get it, how companies buy power, and you'll have a hacker helping you out, pushing you to be skeptical. And that leads me to V Traits and V Renown. V Renown is obtained once you've hit max rank. You start to gain a flat bonus to all your power levels for each level obtained after cap, as opposed to only one per rank up prior to that. And the V Traits are stat increased menu you gain access to once the story arc has been completed. After that, every mission you complete, when all objectives on the map are cleared, an additional trait point. At the beginning and end of every mission, you'll see these questions pop up. Before you can close the menu, you gotta hit an answer. Choose the best one suited for you is that it is related to the traits. So bonus missions are the shortest. They provide you with raw stats related to your base output and mining and crafting. You can only complete two of these every 12 hours and it can take as little as eight minutes to do. While deep sat story missions and link sat conquests are the longest. Remember, in deep sat missions, you can permanently lose your assets. In addition to defense turrets and units, objectives oftentimes will have long range offensive units. These are laser driven RKVs. They take a while to get to you, but they do some serious damage. Their energy is stored either through a flywheel or a capacitor and they will constantly pester you. Good rule of thumb is don't sit still. Objectives generally have a circle of turrets. These are not targetable by your manual weapon systems, and it's worthwhile to send your smallest ships after them. That brings me to two, the manual weapon systems. You can have up to five main guns and three main missile launchers, all manually targeting. Missile launchers only fire when you click directly on an enemy unit, and the reverse for the guns. They have a sense of auto-targeting and are steadily upgraded based off of your chassis power outputs, carrier's rank, carrier's tier. It is worth noting that the earlier tier chassis at the end of the game when maxed out will have significantly better manual weapon systems, and they are faction specific, so military has ballistic ones, while corporate has energy. Everything is affected on them from reload, to damage, to fire rate, to barrels, to quantity of them, and they are all dependent off your carrier's chassis stats. That brings me to the pickup buffs. In Link's at missions, these buffs are temporary, they only last about a minute, but they're about 300% more effective. In every other kind of mission, they stay on until you either leave or die. How many buffs you have and what they're specifically doing is part of the size interface. As well as on the right hand side, you can see a real time readout of your statistics. All advanced mods, chassis mods, and D mods affect your entire team, so oftentimes you'll be buffed by your friend. Now the pickup buffs are a race between you and all other players. If you click on them first, and your drones get to them first, you will get said buff and they will not. The chassis abilities can negatively impact the enemy team. If you're being impacted by a negative chassis ability, you'll see a red radar spinner at the back of your carrier and a bunch of drones doing something probably bad. The dynamic mods are based specifically off of your target. So you would click on the button and then the target unit, and they will either continuously heal or attack that target until either the mod's dead or you tell them to do something else. All salvage is automatically picked up. If you have a salvage module, you'll be able to pick up more within a period of time, as well as your multiplier for said salvage will be higher at the end of the game. And that 
brings me to the excess drones. That's just short for expendable assets. You'll see a meter at the top middle of the UI. You get points for everything you kill, capture, or salvage. Once the meter's been filled a couple times, you can open the communications window. When you're playing, you'll have the excess button at the top. You can click that, select anywhere on the map, and deploy an expendable bay of drones to either help or hurt that area. These are over the network, and they are based off of your carrier statistics. Now, I'm sure you've noticed that within that window, there are multiple layers. So when you're playing a normal mission, you can obviously only deploy to your layer. But if you're playing in a Linksat mission, you can deploy to any layer that the game is present on. Aside from there being a series of achievements directly related to this, it's also incredibly useful, aside from firing long-range weapon systems between the maps, to help hold or attack an objective that you need to complete the link between the stacked game node objectives. It's hard to explain that and sound coherent, so let me just leave it at, you'll see what I mean. But just know that they will be vital in the multi-layer interactions. So if you're still with me, you're my hero. You could probably sit here and talk for another half hour about all the various changes, but I'd like people to get to the end of the video, so I'm gonna leave it there. So thank you for watching, this is Gasper signing up.